Vanquished is a role-playing game show on Twitch. It's a live, interactive, improvisational game. I mean, it, it's almost like story. It, there is a game, there's rules, and you roll for things, you know, at, like you would on any RPG. Um, but it's more improvisational storytelling with a group of friends than it is anything. I get to create a world and stakes and put those in front of the players and then see how they react to them and collaboratively work with them to either make that easier or harder based on their personalities and their characters. But it's, it's a show uh, that we've already filmed one season of. We had one season of live uh, that, I, gosh, there were four volumes. We shot them in volumes like a comic book, usually six issues per volume. So there's around 20 episodes, more than 20, already on our YouTube. So um, what I can tell you from the takeaway of season one is it's about a group of people who thought they were wronged and find out later maybe there was a lot more to the story and quite possibly there were things in their life they couldn't live with and they wronged themselves and had to overcome that and come to terms with who they really were, starting at the very bottom as a group of people who didn't think they knew each other, that had no proper training with their powers, to a group that were fighting in outer space with Exo Manowar and uh, taking down the dead hand and becoming the heroes that they knew they could be. Um, we had a wonderful cast of six individuals um, that all had a wide range of powers. That was everything from a, the, the daughter of Armstrong who was able to tap into the faraway, the boon, and create teleports that traveled between dimensions, um, which usually ended up being super brutal as entire body parts were removed from individuals. We had a man who was a failed bloodshot experiment where his arm, his right arm, was the only part that took to the bloodshot nanites that were stolen from bloodshot and the rest of his body remained the same. And he, had, he just happened to be a Visigoth, so he's someone who's completely technologically inept, but has an arm that can speak to machines and he doesn't really properly know how to use them. And that arm often craved and had quite the hunger for protein and flesh. Uh, so we, we had a lot of amazing characters on that first season and I, I, I think anybody should check it out. So in season two, of Vanquished, I had to figure out how in the world do we raise the stakes? And I don't think I can. I think we just have to take a different direction. We let the stakes get extremely high in season one, and they went from the lowest of low to the highest of high. We went from a homeless camp in the second episode to outer space in the last. So making sure I don't fall into the same pitfalls, I want to ground this story a little bit more and bring the characters all together with the exact same scenario. Uh, so we're going to start the second season confronting one of the newest villains in the Valiant Universe, who is Solomon. So Solomon used to be kind of a advisor for Toyo Harada back in the Harbinger days. And he has a like ungodly ability to, to analyze things and predict outcomes. But he was, in his eyes, not respected by Harada. And after the Sayo papers were released and Harada went off on his crazy ordeal and stole an aircraft carrier and went to, uh, you know, take a, over a small country, um, Solomon took things into his own hands and has basically a group of thugs going around and activating Psyots. After Harada disappeared and the Psyot papers came out, there's about 400 known Psyots on the planet, which to me is really exciting. You know that there's these papers that show them up. They've been exposed. These people have been exposed they know, but they may not know how to tap into what's inside of them. So we're going to encounter a group of people who are all aware that they have these latent abilities, but they don't know what to do with it. And some of them may have gone into hiding. Some of them may be proudly portraying it if they come from a, land, uh, from a place of class and can afford to do so with proper protections. Others may be terrified to let people know that that's who they are, that they're on that list. Names could have been changed, gone into hiding. Um, but through the internet they found on these forums that there's someone who's looking for them, that wants to help them. And they just had to send in these, uh, these basic little interview tapes and questionnaires to this group that they don't know about. And this group is going to be under the control of Solomon. Unbeknownst to the players, I hope they don't watch this video because I'm leaving a lot of this a secret to them. Uh, this organization isn't going to be what they think it is. and they're not meant to get out of it alive. So we're gonna start things right off in the second season with them not knowing that they're walking into basically a giant trap 
and Solomon does not have his, the best intentions. Um, this organization does not necessarily want to activate them as much as it wants to destroy them through the promise of activation. To get ready for season two of Vanquish, you need to read Harbinger. So you need to start with Harbinger, and then you need to check out Harbinger Omega, and then you need to go to Imperium, and then Harbinger Renegades and Generation Zero. Those are going to be your biggest primers. So season one was definitely Archer and Armstrong. That was like the book that got you the most prepared for the crazy journey they went on. So one of the things that was really important to us in season one was audience interaction. Every single show that we do on Hyper RPG, we want to make sure that the audience isn't, it's not like watching a TV show. It's not like playing a game with a group at home. Um, it is a show, but it's also a show that you can be a part of. So we had a couple different ways that you could interact in season one. Like I said, you could, you could help the players with plot points, which drastically changed the way things were going and made my life very difficult because they could do a plot point in the middle of a show that does something absolutely crazy that I have no schematics for, that I have no plans for, and it takes things way off in a crazy direction. That's one way that you could interact. Another is every five subscribers to the channel, we did a chaos die, which was a really fun way to mix things up I would roll a d12 and if it was like a 1 through 4 something bad was going to happen, if it was a 2 or a 5 or 6 something weird would happen, and if it was a 7 through 12 something good would happen, and then I rolled a d6 to see who it happened to on that couch. So just by the audience subscribing to the channel we hit a certain goal, boom, whatever we're doing drops in that moment and now the audience is in a chaotic way taking control and anything could happen in that moment and we had to improv our way through whatever problem that happened. And the other was uh, every week we gave away an NPC slot on the show. So someone that was watching the show would show up the next week as a character and become a part of the Valiant Universe. And that's something we're definitely going to continue doing in season two. I absolutely love that. I love taking audience members and fans and making them a part of the world we were creating and becoming a part of the Valiant Universe. That to me, as a, as a super fan, like I want to be that person that gets to like that put my username in there and lots of times we'd let people message me and they would tell me like I want to be kind of like this and make sure I'm Scottish and and act a certain way uh, that was a really neat experience uh, but to get the audience involved this season we've also been developing a game that the chat will get to play on screen um, outside of what's happening in the story so it's kind of like Pokemon in a way you're going to be fighting a valiant villain as the chat room. Basically the chat room is Gate. They're the global defense and as Gate you get to go out and you get to fight these villains as a chat room and if you defeat the villain before the end of the show the players are gonna get a bonus for that. They're gonna get a advantage um, for you doing so that will change the game and whatever is happening in that moment. Uh, the other way that we're gonna up the ante this season is we're gonna have guests. So we've moved the show from Seattle to Los Angeles and one of the reasons for doing so was to work with Valiant Comic Books to bring guests on the show to play the characters on the show that they play on their upcoming Valiant Digital Entertainment shows. So the plan is to have people like Michael Rowe, who is our new Ninjack, coming on to play Ninjack on the show. And how would our players react to that? If they're a bunch of nobody psyots, how are they going to react to the seasoned Unity hero that is one of the most badass individuals um, in the Valiant Universe. So that's going to be a really exciting thing to see. We've also talked about having writers come on and guest and working really closely with Valiant to make this show as amazing as possible. So season two of uh, Valiant Vanquish on Hyper RPG is going to be premiering on March 22nd, which is a Wednesday. It's every Wednesday night. We put them up on YouTube for free, so if you miss them live on Twitch, I recommend seeing them on Twitch though, for because live content, like so much of it, it's like being in a stadium. You know, when you're in that chat room and you're seeing people react a way you're reacting, it, it makes the experience that much more exciting.